Okay. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, and do you have the link by any chance to the? Oh, so we're live right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you have the? Oh, copy streaming link. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for our LinkedIn tutorial. Flavia is with us. She has a master's of science in bioinformatics informatics and a bachelor's in science and cell physiology and neurobiology, as well as a bachelor of science in biochemistry. We're so grateful to you to be here, share all your knowledge about LinkedIn and how to create one. This will kind of set it up so that when we have our PEEP cohort come in, they already have this background knowledge and they can dive right in. So take it away. Well, thank you, first of all, for the introduction. I'm excited to be here. Um, my aim for today's uh, specific talk is in a more um, kind of just relaxed environment. We're going to go over some of the pros uh, that LinkedIn, which is an online resume builder website, provides uh, some of the features that can help you not only build your resume, but create a network that would expand your ability to get jobs, uh, internships, and, you know, even further uh, institutional academic opportunities. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming and I'd like to get started. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can share this PowerPoint to my best of my abilities. And hopefully, Yadi, is that, can I get a thumbs up that that's showing? That looks great. Awesome. Okay. Well, and our timing is 30 minutes, correct? I want to make, go over the. Absolutely. Take as much as time as you need though. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so um, for those of you that have never heard of LinkedIn before, um, it is, like I said, an online professional networking platform. Um, it re originally was created on the mission to become a, uh, like almost like the Facebook of your resume connections, okay? So keyword here, professionals, okay? We're not posting about family members. We're not posting about our dogs you know, passing away, it's strictly professional and it's strictly to form those networks. And what it does provide though, is it provides a massive audience for whatever you're doing in the professional realm, whether you're publishing a manuscript, whether you're getting a promotion or you're seeking a job. Um, currently in LinkedIn, there is over uh, 645 million members worldwide. This is an older graph, so I would assume that the platform has even grown from then, but you can tell from this image that it's not localized to a specific country or region. We're talking about if you want to have an internship in Kenya, in Ireland, right, working with the University of Dublin, um, having an established platform where you can reach out to mentors, where you can reach out to students is really important, not only if you are pursuing a medical career or a graduate career, but regardless of what your professional background or intentions are. In the realm of LinkedIn, um, there are three categories, if you will. There is the individual, or sometimes referred to as the identity category, which is uh, what you will use to build your own resume and to kind of establish yourself in its own platform. The next one is networking, and it, it kind of is self-evident, where you're going into a, a platform to not only you know, talk about what you can do, but what others can do for you and what others can do and how you can learn from them. And then interestingly enough, around 2016, uh, LinkedIn developed a software or a platform where you can also learn classes um, varying from public speaking to introduction to Python. Um, and it's free. Uh, the classes are taught by people that have done presentations in those topics, professionals and non-professionals alike. Um, but you can find millions of slides and PowerPoints and even classes and lessons within the network. Um, and so that is the third foundation, which is referred to as the knowledge foundation. So let's start with the identity or the individual, which is what most people will be um, you know, interested in, you know, how can I go into this website, develop a resume, get noticed, get jobs, get attention from people that I want to get attention in my professional 
uh, network. So I'll, I'll just give you an example of what my homepage looks like. Um, I want to highlight some key things. Um, once you make a LinkedIn profile, it works very much like, like I mentioned, like Facebook, but like professional Facebook, right? So you'll have your post. In this case, we're looking at someone that just got promoted or will start a career in software and engineering at this company. And um, you'll have the news on the right. Um, and then on to your left, which is what I want to bring your attention to, is your groups, your followers, or followed hashtags, I should say, uh, and your most recent uh, connections or recent events. Um, one of the things I want to mention when you create a LinkedIn profile, and we'll go over this in a bit, is you really have to highlight things that are relevant to what you want to do in the long term. It's not, you know, if you want to pursue medicine, you're not really writing down, I volunteered uh, as a waiter in so-and-so restaurant, because that's not pertinent to the career choice that you want to do. However, volunteering at your local hospital, that might be more pertinent and more relevant to your uh, resume on, on this platform. The other thing I want to mention, and as you notice, the red box to the left is the uh, Groups. So groups are a way that you can not only involve yourself in groups that you have already joined, whether in person or online, um, but it, it also kind of foundates the ability of your net of your uh, profile to be seen, right? Because whoever is in that group is now instantly connected to your account, um, and they're whatever posts they have, whatever companies they're working for or achieving to work for, will now be also uh, visible to you. Um, and so those are some of the benefits of joining groups on LinkedIn. Um, keep in mind, and my advice would be to make sure that the groups are relevant. In my case, I want to pursue a medical career. So I have my, you know, professional fraternity uh, from college. I also have health professionals and everything that has to do with the medical sphere. Um, and so that is one of the things that I, I really want to highlight. The next thing I want to highlight are followed hashtags. This is pretty um, kind of self-evident in that you're going to be following certain groups, certain movements. If you are in health policy, your uh, hashtag is going to look a little different from this. Um, and we'll go over networking in a bit. But the idea is you want to get involved in everything that is concerning to your professional aspiration and your community. So for example, in pre-health dreamers, we work with undocumented uh, students, DACA students, and we also bring in the, wor the world of STEM, whether that's graduate or medical. And so one of the things that, you know, we would be promoting as a followed hashtag would be anything that has to do or any key points that have to do in that mesh. The last thing I wanna focus on is the more views you get, the more posts you get, the more, um, I guess, visualization you get on, on LinkedIn, the better it is. The more job offers, the more you're getting noticed, right? It is okay to, you know, just kind of make a LinkedIn for now and, push off the networking, but the whole premise of the platform is for you to be noticed as a professional. And so it's really important for you to engage in the community of LinkedIn and within that community, the community that you're trying to aim and, and, and be part of more. Okay, so the recent tab is really just your latest networking activity. I also wanna bring your attention um, to views on posts. So. For example, you're following a group that works with biomedical services in your local community and you follow them on LinkedIn, right? You reshare their posts. Not only will you be noticed, but you will also be spreading whatever platform post that that group has. So it's a win-win situation for yourself and for the group you follow. Okay. One of the things I wanna highlight, and this is, kind of the main page of what you would see on your LinkedIn. And after this PowerPoint, we'll actually open up LinkedIn and, <clears throat> and go through detail about what it is. Um, some of the things I wanna highlight are the name, of course, your, you know, whatever your, your name is. The degree, I like to keep it short and sweet, your latest degree, uh, and then whatever uh, status of higher education it was. 
uh, this is going back to the followed hashtags, right? I follow different things that, for example, I'm interested in, but that also would uphill my, my uh, resume. And lastly, your contact information. So that's your dashboard, if you'd will, at your LinkedIn profile, okay? The other thing that I want to mention with LinkedIn, and I think it's really interesting because I've had students in the past tell me, okay, well, how do I go about making a resume? I'm actually helping a girl now create her resume, you know, third year UMD student. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's University of Maryland. Um, and she's kind of lost. She wants to go into criminal justice, but she doesn't know how to kind of format a resume, right? What do I put? What are the relevant experiences that a job in that field, which in her case it's crim just, would ask me for. Um, one of the really good things about LinkedIn is you can build a resume continuously. So what I mean by that is once you've already set, set up your LinkedIn profile, you can re-download that resume as many times as you want and it won't delete itself. And you can keep adding experiences to your LinkedIn profile and it'll automatically update on your resume. So that is one of the key features that personally brought me to LinkedIn years ago, right? Is answering that question of what do I do with my resume? Here's an example of what your experience profile would look on like Lincoln. So let's take a look. In my case, I worked at the FDA for a bit and I had different levels of positions. So what we see here and uh, follow my cursor if you can, or let me see if I can annotate, there we go. One of the things that I, I like doing on LinkedIn and I think it's a great use for is you can detail promotions within your organization. For example, if you started working as just an intern in some company, right, as it is in my case, then you can say, I've graduated from that and now I've scaled, I've been promoted to a fellow. And I think that does it, LinkedIn does a really nice job of highlighting that you've not only been an intern, but you've been promoted to a higher degree. And, you know, whatever higher education you're pursuing, they love to see that, right? Or any job you're pursuing. So um, key things that I want you to take away from this is promotion, right, is clear and precise on LinkedIn. And experiences are clear and precise. And that's what jobs and companies and, you know, educational institutions want to look for. They don't want a paragraph and a half of what you did. They want bullet points. They want this happened, then this happened, then this happened, and this is why I'm qualified. Um, and so, I, you know, it does a really nice job of, of kind of setting up a resume for people that you know, for me personally, I had no idea how to do it back in the day. So it, it really helps in that aspect. Another thing I want to point out is when you create a LinkedIn and going back to the whole paragraph situation, please keep in mind that bullet points speak louder than paragraphs. It is more important to the person that's reading your resume to know in one sentence what you did or in bullet points what you did than it is in a whole paragraph of your research. And this is one of the tips that I personally had a fall on when I made my LinkedIn, I would write paragraphs on and about my research. I got feedback that that is not what jobs, companies, institutions are looking for. Keep it simple and, and informative, right? So um, one of the key things that LinkedIn allows you to do, and then we'll, we'll take a look at this more when we actually open up the website, is you can go in and you can edit the description of each internship, and you can associate the internship to whatever company you, um, you have. So for example, in this case, the FDA has its own LinkedIn platform. I've linked my experience at, to the LinkedIn platform of FDA. So whoever wants to see, it, for example, if somebody didn't know what FDA was, they could go in and get more information on the company, the institution, or the governmental agency. Uh, this works either way for newer companies. This works better for companies that you, you know people may not have heard of, and they're curious as to what the hell that company does and why you're a qualified candidate for a company. Um, the other thing I wanted to highlight is 
the same thing that would go on a resume, which is your you know time that you spent and and how long you spent in an in an internship is uh, kind of required in LinkedIn. It's not an option. You have to tell them, I did this from this to this time. This is how long I spent uh, every time you enter an experience. And the last thing I want to highlight are uh, links, and we'll take a more look at, at what that means in a second. But essentially, a link is you can personally link uh, a URL to your experience. Let's say, for example, uh, you published a, a manuscript or you you came out in the news of whatever organization you came out in, right? You came out in a, in a newspaper headline or you were mentioned at some award or you just mentioned as a member of whatever organization or, you know, as a, an employee of whatever company. You can, uh, if that place has a website, you can link that back to the experience and that is even more information to the person that's looking over your online resume about what you did and who you are and what you were doing at that time. So those are the some key things that I just wanted to highlight with experience, the experience tab on LinkedIn. Um, and the experience tab, I forgot to mention, encompasses not only internships, fellowships, but it also encompasses anything that you think is the most relevant experience to whatever professional uh, pursuit you're, you're, you're following. Okay. Let's move on from here. Um, and again, I'm gonna go over the different tabs after the presentation, but it's hard to do on PowerPoint. I think it's more informative if I were to just open the tabs personally from my computer and go over them independently. Um, but for now, we're gonna switch over to network, okay? So what? why LinkedIn, right? We've established that LinkedIn is a networking source for professional um, aspiring individuals. I have a, you know, this is kind of just an idea of, and granted, this is the older LinkedIn platform. This, they've changed a lot on, on how they proceed networking on LinkedIn. But what you can notice is all major academic institutions, all major NGOs, um, companies, regardless of what it is, will have their own LinkedIn platform. And not only will they have their own LinkedIn platform, but they'll have the ability to follow that platform. Again, so you're getting more visible to the network. You're getting introduced to the group, which is important. So I suggest and I advise people to follow whatever you know they feel passionate about, whatever big companies are trying to get a job for. Really show them that you're interested in, in kind of pursuing that route. Um, you can follow posts they have, and more importantly, you can follow people within that um, within that group. So, for example, uh, you can make connections to CEOs. You can make connections to vice presidents within the company that you're aiming to to work for. Okay, so it, it really is. I'm extending the olive branch because I want to get from point A, which is where I stand, to point B, which is where I want to be, and this is a great this is a great way to do that. So in this case, I have here Children's Hospital, a great known, you know, uh, pediatric institution for people um, across the U.S. And, you know, I follow them because eventually at some point I'd love to work there. And I really like their comments. I'm active member of their community. Um, so it makes it easier for recruiters at Children's Hospital to kind of solicit me and say, hey, are you interested in working for this bioinformatic position that will open so and so day, right? And and so that that way you're getting noticed is, is the message at the end of the day. And then jobs, jobs is again going back to how how active are you on this platform, and how good is your resume? Those are the two simple foundations that it comes down to. If your resume is great and people see that you're active in whatever company they are looking for, then you will be getting a bunch of jobs and people reaching out to you. Um, and so LinkedIn itself has a job tab. Uh, you can personally uh, kind of apply once you have your resume already built. And that's also a great thing with LinkedIn. Once you have that resume set in stone, it's so easy to apply, right? It's just one click your name, some other information, but no need to continuously update your resume and put that employment um, 
uh, you know, background history, um, it kind of is already there. They kind of know who you are if they're also messaging you. So there's no need to just redo every single step that you've previously done. So that's also a great thing. Recently, they came out with skill assessments, which is what I want to highlight real quickly. Um, skill assessments are a, a way that you can prove to a company that you know something. In my case, for example, I'm in a bioinformatics field, which means I code for biology, essentially, right? And so one of the big factors that lies in my um, kind of career is the ability to perform Python or BioPython, right? That's one of the key um, points that I should know as a bioinformatician. And so one of the things that you can do on LinkedIn, this is a pretty new feature, is you can prove by taking an assessment, it doesn't take more than 20 minutes, 10 questions, um, that you are actually familiar with the topic. And once you've proven that, there will be a little blue check box by that uh, skill, in this case, Python, let's say. And that kind of speaks to recruiters saying, OK, well, this person actually does know Python because it passed this kind of skill assessment, which, you know, take it, take it or leave it is is in some way more speaking about what you can do than what you can't do. Right. And so that is one of the new features on LinkedIn that you can kind of work with. I haven't personally tried much more than just coding languages, but I'm sure there are other skills that would also be assessed. Uh, interview prep. And that's another thing that is pretty new on LinkedIn. Um, it's a series of questions that would be more geared to whatever profession you're aiming for. So for example, a person that's going into medicine, the questions will be more geared on, tell me what community service you've done in the population, tell me what qualifies you as a candidate for an institution and things like that, rather if you were going into business or another field. Resume builder is literally what it sounds like. It helps you build your resume. Granted, I haven't used this option, but I can imagine it being a step-by-step -step function to help you build a resume. So that may come in handy for all those people that are new to LinkedIn. Um, and also a really cool feature that I didn't highlight here is salary. And I know everybody's you know, kind of, that's one of the itches they have when they look for a job and they're like, well, tell me the salary, right? You're telling me all this great stuff about the job, all these benefits, but there is no salary information about the job anywhere. And so one of the things that LinkedIn does is it estimates what that salary range would be for that job. And I think that's one of the really, really cool feature. Um, it'll take past employees and it'll take kind of the idea of what you do. So for example, a bioinformatician is in the range of 80 to 120. So it'll average out somewhere in the middle for those uh, two kind of maximas of the spectra and give you an idea of how much you would be making in that job, regardless of the information that company provides. Take it with a grain of salt, but it at least gives you an idea of how you would proceed in that job. And the other thing is job alerts, right? If you're actively looking for a job, you're actively looking for an internship, you want to get those notifications, that's an option. Okay, so it really does, really does help out with job opportunities, internship and fellowship and opportunities. Okay, so I'm just going to conclude here the presentation and then we'll follow up with an kind of an on site tutorial of, of the platform. Um, I just want to reiterate that it is a networking platform. It aims to expand your individual resume to institutions, NGOs companies, whatever group you're looking for, and also to your fellow peers, regardless of whether you're in business or medicine, it's really important to start networking. It's really important, regardless of your immigration status, to get your voice out there, to get your resume out there, and to start connecting with people. It opens the doors for job opportunities. You become visible in the e-world, if you will, right, which is slowly becoming what you know our world is today. Everything is online now. So the sooner you can hop on, the better. And like I mentioned, it will advance your academic and career spheres, not only for your career, but if you're a student at a university, you wanna start connecting to those students. You wanna start telling them, you know, cause you might hear groups, 
uh, I had a friend, she got connected to a person on LinkedIn. That person went to one of my universities and she was invited into apply, not necessarily be in the group, but apply to the Quest Honor Program. And then because of her background, she got in. But those are the doors that, you know, probably wouldn't have heard if she hadn't, you know, pursued uh, a LinkedIn platform. So with that said, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to open up a my LinkedIn personally. And I'm going to uh, screen share this. Hopefully nothing pops out. <laughs> All right. So we're going to just go over some key features here on LinkedIn. I'm not going to do anything too crazy because I don't want to overwhelm anybody. Um, but like I said, this is kind of what you would get, right? This is your dashboard. This is your homepage. This is what you see once you have a completed resume. Let's go to the first thing, which I like to do is view profile, right? So this is your, this is you, this is your hub, right? Um, some key things I want you to take away from this presentation are get started adding your resume on LinkedIn. Let's look at the tabs and then we'll follow up with the network later. The tabs go like this. There's an about tab make it brief. They don't want to know your sob story. They don't want to know, you know, everything that's happened. Make it brief. What degrees do you have? What are you looking for on LinkedIn? The next tab is experience. What is your experiences? Make it concrete, but make it informative. You want to boast about yourself. You want to be proud about what you've done and show them that you're proud of what you've done and what you've done, uh, whatever activity you've done and make it relevant to your career. Again, you're not seeing, you know, my two years waitering on, on this uh, on this platform. You're seeing, you know, more lab oriented stuff because I'm in STEM. So make it relevant to whatever career aspirations you have. Let's take a look a little bit more on uh, links in experience tabs, right? So uh, a great, a great, uh, a great example is actually right here are pre-health dreamers. Um, I was very honored to become a PEEP mentor. And one of the things that I want to do is for anybody that's looking at experiences might not know, right, what a PEEP mentor is, they can go ahead and click this link. It'll open up the PEEP mentorship program and they can get more information on that. So really just kind of throw information at them, right? If you have a link, make it work. Um, another one, undergraduate researcher, uh, it shows your current lab members, and so it can really boast your resume the more information you put on. Within the experience tab, I'll open up a, I'll open up what an edit is, okay? So you're editing an experience that you had. This is how you would input experiences on LinkedIn. The first thing you're going to see is the title the employment, was it full or part-time, was it self-employed, whatever. The next thing is the company. So big thing with companies is if your company has an established LinkedIn group, it will show up. But if it does not, then this little icon to the left will just be a vague uh, kind of building-esque image. So like this. So Gilchrist Immigrant Resource Center unfortunately does not have a LinkedIn, hence why the icon is just this anonymous John Doe, right? So, you know, that is something you should just have a heads up on. The location of the place, how long were you there for, and the description. Additionally, you can add media. If you have presentations you've done there, if you have posters, journals, whatever, um, make sure to add. Like I said, it never hurts to be more, give more information than less, right? And the last thing I didn't mention is you can have your resume in different languages, right? So are you looking to go to Italy and study abroad, right? Uh, your recruiter doesn't speak a bit of English. Well, it can translate it for you in, in Italian, right? So um, that's a really cool feature that you know LinkedIn also provides. Um, keep that in mind. <clears throat> okay, so that's the experience tab. And that kind of... Um, continues with all the other tabs, that kind of concept of I can add an experience or I can add an education, I can edit it, it will ask me the timeline, it'll ask me what I did during, you know, whatever event, 
um, and it kind of coats that into into a nice into a nice resume. So the same thing with education, right? Um, same thing with licenses. So if you have a license to perform any certain task, if you have a certification you've done of a certain course, add that in, right? People want to see that you're engaged on this platform, that you've done things. So please make sure that even if it's the smallest thing, if it's relevant to your career, add it in. Volunteering, same thing as an experience, but it's under a different tab. And so you can start to see and you can start to imagine a resume being built by this platform, right? When we print out the resume, it's going to look a little bit like this. And now you can go ahead and edit the resume, right? It's not like a locked in Word document, right? But it gives you a good foundation. And that's what we're aiming for with people, especially people like me that had no idea how to make a resume. You hear, make a CV, make a resume. And you're like, well, I don't know what to put on it, which is a fair point. So you can start to imagine a resume being built as I'm talking. This is what I was mentioning with the blue check, okay? So I passed a Python skill assessment on LinkedIn. It lets my recruiters know, okay, she can probably do Python if she passes, or she has some foundational concept that would provide enough for our company to potentially hire her, right? So it's always good to take these skill quizzes if you have the time, if you have the patience, and if you know the stuff, okay? Don't take these skill quizzes if you don't know what you're doing um, because that, will just not work out, right? It'll just not pass and the blue check won't show up. The next thing is if you're in STEM, uh, I don't know how many people here are in graduate school aiming to go to medical school, but we all know the five rules of medical school, right? GPA, MCAT, clinical, research, and volunteering. Those are the five foundations that will get you into an institution. One of the things that LinkedIn does is I can link all my publications on here. So I have a pretty hefty background in research, right? That's taken up a big chunk of my life. And throughout those years, I've been able to publish multitude of manuscripts on my research. And so one of the really cool things is the publications tab, you can add the title of your publication and you can also link it. So if there's a link available, I can open up the link. If Imagine I'm an employer recruiter and it'll open up to the publication that I have participated in, right? And so you can imagine this uh, being brought out and being helpful for our grad students, for our med students, right? Um, so that's a really cool tab that I'm really happy they added in. Uh, this, wasn't a, this wasn't a thing three years ago. <laughs> so I'm really happy this happened. Courses, this is a new thing. I wouldn't go over with this because I've seen people kind of just put every course in the resume and the transcript here. They don't really care too much about your coursework. This is an additional like the cherry on top of a Sunday kind of deal. But put courses that are relevant to recruiters, right? So if I'm applying for a bioinformatic job, a bioinformatician, then I'm going to put, I've done bioinformatics and genomics. I've done de novo assembly classes. I've done NGRs because that's speaking their language, right? I've done these courses that are relevant to my professional aspiration. So you can always add courses. It's pretty easy. You just put the course name, the number of the class, and associated with whatever experience, remember experience or educational profession. So in this case, I linked it back to my MS bioinformatics candidate, but you can also link it back to your educational, uh, I guess, slot um, and uh, make sure that it's just relevant and you don't go over, because I've seen people really just go unhinged on the course <laughs> tab. Projects. What projects have you done, right? Projects show leadership. Oh, I did this. I participated in this. It shows innovation, shows creativity, right? And that's what recruiters want to see. So if you have a link to a project, if you worked on a project, link it back to the organization. Make sure it's concrete and make sure people know that you've done it, right? So that's really important as well. Honors and awards. What have you done? Have you spoken at conferences? Have you gotten you know x y and z at some 
honor thing. You know, make sure that you're proud of your accomplishments and make sure you boast about it. Because I feel like in our community, we're kind of shy about our stuff, right? Now's not the time to be shy. We can be humble later, but right now we need jobs. We need to get from point A to point B in whatever institution. Make sure you speak about your achievements, right? Because this is where it counts. Test scores, right? If you've taken the MCAT, you've taken the GRE, make sure that if you feel confident enough, put it out there. You know, people will be impressed by your test scores and you might get some colleges writing to you. You might get some graduate. Interestingly enough, when I put my um, GRE score, which is recent there, I got some PhD offers, right? I'm not pursuing a PhD, but if I did, that would be a great, that would be a great way to go about it, right? And so it's really important to make sure that you know how and why you are, uh, you are adding these things in. Languages, nowadays people are intermingled. It's not enough to just speak English, especially in this country with you know, the growing number of Hispanics, Spanish is becoming a secondary must, right? So a lot of places, especially hospital settings are gonna wanna know you're bilingual. And if you are great, it makes it easier to hire you. It makes one less complicated thing, right? So boast about the fact that you know Spanish or if you know another language, right, that's relevant. Organizations, this deals back more to if you're a student um, or if you're in a institution, right? Uh, they want to see that you're involved in your community. Um, they want to know that you are actively taking part of groups within your university clubs, um, you know, and even outside of university, what are you guys doing? What groups are you guys getting involved in? What are your passions, right? Um, those are really important for things like institutions that you might be applying, such as medical school, such as graduate school, less important for companies. Companies kind of just care about the logistics of who you are, right? What courses have you taken? How good are you? And can you execute? Uh, but if you're going more for an NGO, if you're going more for an institution, you know, even governmental agencies, but that's that's a maybe, they will care about what you're involved in, right? Because you, it's more about the person than the numbers in, the, in that case. And lastly, interest. So I don't really mess with this tab too much, but as I said, you can follow people, certain people on LinkedIn. Um, and the benefits of that is you'll just get their posts continuously and you can start engaging in their, in their community. In my case, I follow the creator of Khan Academy. It's a famous uh, kind of uh, MCAT prep bundle, but it also delves into a lot of other courseworks. Um, and the reason I do that is because sometimes I get people that are also studying for the MCAT that would be able to help me out with certain questions, right? And so it's really important to make sure you understand what you're wanting to get out of LinkedIn, okay? And not let it get over your head. I want to get MCAT study buddies, if you will. And this is a place that I can get people clear-headed, cold-headed, and we can actually get some work done. Um, and then at the end, causes, this is self-explanatory, I won't go into much detail uh, regarding that. Um, one other thing I want to mention is the featured network or the post network and how you make posts. So um, I'll take a quick look at the last post I made. Um, this engages your community. It engages your resume. Like I said, there's a time and place to be humble and I'm 99% outside of LinkedIn. I'm the quietest person ever, but on LinkedIn, you really have to put yourself out there, right? Just to get to the next step. Really boast about your accomplishments. If you've done something, if you've been promoted, if you even so just spoke at an award or a conference or whatever, talk about it, right? Talk about what you've done, link those hashtags in, get noticed, get noticed by recruiters, get noticed by institutions, right? So that's, you know, making a, making a post isn't hard. It works the same as Facebook. So I'm not going to go over how to make a post, but you can always link your, um, your conference, your event. Um, now I will say this, if you make a post, don't make it about your dog. Like I mentioned, right? Keep it professional, keep it centered and keep it focused to what you're doing. All right, so enough about the profile page. Um, 
One of the things I do want to mention before I leave is this tab right here. So this is the follower slash connection tabs, and I'll go over how to make a, a connection real quick in, in LinkedIn. But one of the things that I want to focus on is building that network, okay? So if you've gone to a university, start sending out those invitations to people, okay? You're also a student. Great, I'm a student. Let's be friends on LinkedIn. It doesn't have to be someone you know. That's not the purpose. The purpose is to start building a network, okay? And one of the big things is that person may know a person that knows a person that is going to get something that you want, right? So really start building those connections on LinkedIn. Um, an ideal LinkedIn is going to have plus 500 connections. I know that sounds crazy, but you really shouldn't limit your professional networking um, to any number. You want to be connected to everything and everywhere and be able to pull those resources when you, when you want and when you can. Uh, last thing is the edit public profile settings. So one of the things you can do with LinkedIn is you can, you have what you would call an online resume URL. And what this means is if you give anybody this LinkedIn, uh, you know, website right here that says linkedin.com slash my name, they can go on it and they can pretty much see my entire resume. Right. And so it works as like an e-resume whenever somebody's like, oh, wh what have you done? Why would you be a good person? Let's say you're at a cocktail event. Right. And you don't have time to be pulling out a resume and explaining, you know, I'm qualified for these reasons. You just say, hey, check down my LinkedIn. It's all there and easy peasy. Right. So it, it really comes in handy, especially in the world we are now where everything's online, everything's on the Internet. And I just want to show you really quickly what a resume for, for uh, LinkedIn would look like. So um, one of the things I'll, I'll do too. So this is a save a PDF. And let me see if I can. So this is a kind of a PDF, just quick version of what my resume would look like just done by LinkedIn. This is automatic. It does it for me. I might want to change some things here, but right, it, it's a good start. It's a good start. And the other thing is build a resume. So you can create from profile a resume and it will say, it will ask you a bunch of questions and you can go through with it. And once you do that, it will, you can preview this. And now you have what I would call a great resume. I mean, change some things around, but the gist is there, right? Um, so I think it really helps nail down what you should be putting on a resume, right? And with that said, let's go to networking because that's the other thing LinkedIn is good for. The top portion of your uh, networking panel is going to be people that are not necessarily friends, but they have some kind of platform and you can follow them, right? So these are what you would call LinkedIn influencers. <laughs> and basically all they do are people of high status that, for example, CEOs, uh, people that usually have a giant following and that aren't necessarily able to connect. It's more of just a follow page, okay? And then down here are people you may know from, you know, it'll say whatever, if you are from University of Maryland, say University of Maryland, but regardless of the university or the academic institution, it'll say why you would know them. So sometimes it's location-based, sometimes it's, um, sometimes it's institution-based, job-based, what you will. And the easiest way to connect is just pressing connect. And now you, you know, the other person's going to have to accept your connection um, but not only will they check out your resume, which gets you views um, and gets you more noticed out there, right? Your activity goes up, but it also increases your network. So it's, it's a win-win situation. Um, and, and, and I really want to hone the idea that you don't necessarily have to know these people to get connected. You just have to make sure that also if you get weird offers, right, don't, <laughs> don't answer them. But I feel like that's a, that's just comes with the territory of being on the internet. Okay, um, we're going to go to notifications, then we're going to go to jobs, and we will call it a day. Notifications, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it will just be all the notifications you have. Um, it'll, every day, there's going to be a wrap-up, which is your LinkedIn kind of five things you should know about what happened today. 
um, people that you follow, right? So Kurt Newman is the CEO of Children's Hospital, is somebody I look up to, and I will be actively participating in his posts. Um, and so I will get notifications of things that he's worked on, you know, stem cell research. Um, unfortunately, in this case, it's a much darker and gloomier post about a friend of his passing, but really engage in the research you're looking at. LinkedIn is a great place for research hubs, it's a great way for clinical uh, development, right? New things are coming out every day that a part of your going to medical or graduate school, you should just be informed. Okay, and then jobs. We touched on this briefly with the, um, with the presentation. Um, but, you know, once you make your profile on LinkedIn, um, it will become self-evident what this tab does. It literally is job applications, okay? So I can click on a job. It'll give me the whole rundown of what they did, what they want. Easy apply means like this. It'll upload my resume. It'll upload my name. It'll upload my contact information. All I have to do is press apply and that's it. You can also save a job. You can scroll through cities. You can scroll through, uh, you know, whatever, whatever uh, floats your boat on what you want to do here, whether it's selecting and filtering by state or selecting and filtering by the title of the job. You can kind of understand the gist of it. Um, and then the other thing I want to say just before we end is, like I mentioned, LinkedIn does a great job of connecting you to your professional peers. Please take advantage of the information that's provided here. Um, and with that said, I'm going to show a slide share really quickly of what the network profile is on LinkedIn. So if you can look at the panel on the right, you can click on learning and it will um, kind of show you what LinkedIn provides. Now there's a package you can do for free a month, but there are free courses you can take. Um, in this case, if you don't know Python, you can start taking Python, um, Microsoft Excel, SQL databases, R programming, and then also things like leadership, right? How to talk in front of a crowd. Um, so it really is a really nice way to kind of further your skill set on LinkedIn, and it'll show up. It'll show up on your LinkedIn that you're learning through their um, through their program. Um, and the last thing is events. Okay, so one of the really cool things is you can add the event that you're on or you're being uh, kind of part of. Um, and you can kind of give them an idea of what you're doing if you're presenting in person at a conference or you're presenting virtually, right? Um, you can tag it on your LinkedIn and not only will it connect the institution that you're presenting for, but it'll also give you uh, kind of a platform to your peers that you're, you're doing something that's, that's of merit. Okay, well, with that said, I'm gonna stop the share. I'm gonna open it up for any questions um, that anybody may have. Thank you so much, Flavia. That's amazing. LinkedIn really does have so many updates. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be going back in there and making sure that everything's updated on my own LinkedIn. And um, I don't see any questions here, but if anybody is posting them uh, later on when they get a chance to watch it, um, we'll be sure to ping you so you can answer them. Um, <laughs> thank you so much again for sharing all your knowledge and taking the time. Um, we had such a wonderful experience, I know, with the PEEP cohort, so I'm really excited to bring you and kind of like have them do it live. Um, but if anybody else who's not part of PEEP is open or has a question, please don't hesitate to like post it here or send us an email. We're always happy to share as much information as possible. Thank yeah. you again, Flavia. Thank you so much.